Not a bad time. I've got quite a few items in this one because I've got quite a backlog going on. So I'm trying to get through quite a few. This could be a long one. Excellent. Right. Power switches. This is an unusual profile, this one. It's quite a wide type. It's quite normal to see these narrow types, which is like half the width of this one. All right, it's quite a common size. This size is a bit unusual. And I've actually got a device which needs your replacement power switch. It's actually HP power supply, which I've done a video on. And you may have even seen it by now. But the power switch is faulty. I did actually rebuild the power switch. I stripped it down, cleaned it all up, put it back together again. And it got it working pretty well. I haven't really had any problems with it since then. But I don't trust it because occasionally it doesn't work. And if you've got a switch which is potentially not quite making good contact, it could start arcing. And then you end up melting and catching fire or who knows what other sorts of horrible things you can happen. So if you've got a switch like that which doesn't clean up properly, it's still a little bit suspect. It's best just to replace it and have done with it. So I did try cleaning it as I say and I did get it a lot better. But I'm still not happy with it. I picked up some replacements. So I can just drop one of these on the front. There will be links down below for these things if I can provide a link. Oh, some more switches. So I use this particular switch format quite a bit on a certain project I built. I'm trying to get the white buttons is a bit hard for some reason. I don't know why. Seems people don't make the white buttons very often. But it's this format here. And there's different qualities. This is honey one. There's different ones. There's actually honey with an E in there. It's like honey, normal. So there's lots of knockoff brands. Qualities vary quite drastically. Um, and the way you can tell quality basically is how good this switch press is. And this one actually feels quite good. That feels quite positive. There are the ones which feel a bit soft and you sort of push them and think, oh, is it going to actually spring back? And uh, this one is feeling quite good. I've already got some white ones which have got LEDs built into them, but I wanted some which didn't have LEDs because they don't actually need them. Okay, some little JST connectors, well, pre-made cables. These are seven pin. You can get these in different lengths, different configurations. And rather than making them yourself, just buy them pre-done. It's just easier. I mean, sure, you can get the satisfaction of sitting there for ages making your own cables. I'd rather not do that. I'd rather spend the time fixing a piece of test gear rather than making cables. So I just buy them. They're cheap. It's not really worth my time to make them myself. Because I was getting low, I bought these before, and I was, I've only got like two left, I think. So, uh, yeah. Not exciting, is it? This one appears to be local. Not quite sure what it is. Got some interesting packaging. <laughs> Alright. Okay. Would have tried to protect it. This is a used device. So a bit of wood. Eh, okay, we're done. We're done the care to try and stop it from getting damaged. That's good. So it's a VGA to Thunderbolt port adapter. Now I've just recently put a Mac Pro 2013 which has got six Thunderbolt ports on it and I don't actually have any connections for Thunderbolt <laughs> I don't have anything so I've got to buy a bit of gear to do those kinds of connections so I can hook up displays and various configurations and what have you now I do have HDMI displays but I think one of them is actually running on VGA I don't know maybe it might be a mini HDMI I can't remember but it's adapting from that to a VGA so I needed a Thunderbolt to VGA adapter amongst other things I've got other things coming I'm sure this is another locally sourced thing, I think. Oh look, here's some more things that are coming. <laughs> New Green is a HDMI to Thunderbolt port. Or mini display port, whichever one you call them. That's the other thing, I think a mini display port, that's right. It's have a naming for them. But I think mini display port and Thunderbolt are basically the same thing. There are some differences, but they both work with the displays. You can't necessarily use a you need a display port for Thunderbolt stuff, but you can use a Thunderbolt port for display stuff. Yeah, that's, that's the simple definition. So yeah, two of those, so I'll pick up two HDMI displays. Right, 
Right. So in the last mail bag, probably the last one, I don't know which sequence I'm going to do this in, I mentioned about having these kinds of adapters because I showed, oh, I've still got sitting on the desk here, I showed these things which are these extensions and the little flexors that go into them. And I basically run out of these adapters as well. I only had like, one left, I think. <laughs> Here's the very last one in the last project I worked on. So I had to get some more. So these are FPC 10 pin 0.5 millimeter pitch connectors on this side. On the rear, it's actually got a footprint here for an FPC 10 pin 1 millimeter footprint. So if you have those connectors, you can actually put them on the back instead. But these are the ones I need. It's 0.5 mil. These are used for sharp memory displays, which work really well. Oh, my ram sticks. Struggling with tape again. Oh. <laughs> Doesn't like tape. So I've done a little video showing how my Wolfdale speaker system has got a problem. Where what's happened is the cones and stuff have actually come apart. The surrounds that are falling apart. They're all splitting. And it turns out you can actually buy replacement surrounds on AliExpress. I don't know what the quality is like, but the ones that are in the speakers right now obviously aren't that good because they're only 15 years old, I think, and they're falling apart. It's like, well, these are supposed to be high quality speakers, they're Wolfdale, right? But the cones, oh, every single speaker, all of them, they're all split. And they haven't had that much usage. It's not like if you've thrashed them and like, I had them like, turn it loud and having a lot of excursion on the cones and that sort of stuff. I've only used them for home theatre and that's not that loud. I don't have it booming or anything. Just for clarity, so you can hear it a little bit better. Yeah, anyway, so I've got four of this size and four of this size. So I think these are the set I need for doing the main left and right channels. I've got some more coming, which will be for the centre channels as well. I think that's what they were anyway, but yeah, I'm waiting for other things to tell. I've got the glue got to come yet, and there was something else. There's a couple of things, and I've got a few of these things coming. So once it's all arrived, I'll be repairing those speakers, and I'll probably do a video about it. I've never done it before, but how hard can it be? You know, I'm like, if something breaks on me, I will fix it myself. Just a new thing to learn. Got something here from DigiKey, I think I know what's in here. Obviously, because I ordered it from DigiKey. Now, there's a story about these, and people which know the channel quite well or follow me quite a bit will know that will know what our story is already. I tried to buy these parts from Elima 14. I actually did a thing on Twitter about it as well. Surprisingly, Elima 14 still didn't reply, actually. So, I had an issue with buying these parts from Elima 14 website. I bought a whole bunch of stuff. No, I spent about 500 bucks on this website trying to buy a bunch of stuff, a bunch of capacitors, and stocking up bits and pieces. And I needed some more LTC 1052s. These are chopper op amps because I used it recently on my repair project for the HP 3400A. It was one of the parts I could have used. It's actually a choice of two parts I could have used, and this is one of them. I realised I've only got a couple left. I haven't got many left. So I ordered these things from Elim 14, amongst all the other things, and they emailed me saying, oh, sorry, we can't supply these parts to the Schritter items. It's an op amp. It's, what's all shitted about it, seriously? So I emailed back saying, can you tell me what's so shitted about these? Because it's just an op amp. No reply. Anyway, I ended up needing some more parts, so I ordered, did another order, added them on again to another order, got a message back saying, sorry, you can't order these, these are restricted parts. So again, I replied to that email saying, can you tell me what's going on? You know, why are these restricted? What is the restriction on them? No reply. So I waited a, a few weeks, chat a thing on Twitter, targeting Element 14, saying, your customer service is a bit crap because your guy never replied to my emails. And turns out on Twitter, they haven't replied there either, even though it's public. So it seems Elma 14 customer service is a bit rubbish. Not impressed by that. So it's to be servicing professionals, and they're not even reply to your emails. And that's not good, is it? Or even direct messages. So yes. Anyway, so these are LTC 1052CN and LTC 1052CN8, which is the 8-pin package. The CN is the 14-pin package. DigiKey weren't a problem, and DigiKey usually have quite good restrictions, right? If they've, they actually have, ask you to fill out a declaration, stuff like that, what you're using the parts for, things like that. So they actually are careful about where they send their products and the restrictions they have on them. And yet these weren't restricted on DigiKey, so I don't understand what's going on there. I mean, DigiKey was not a problem. Um, Element 14 wouldn't send them, or even reply to my messages. Naughty Element 14.
everyone, tag element 14 in this video. Get in there, comment, chuck in the comments, tag element 14, share it with them, stick it on Twitter, whatever. Give them a bit of a poke. They need it. The customer service is useless. There are things like that which make me use companies like DigiKey and Arrow and Mauser instead. We have a box here, not sure what's in here. Well, I'm actually not sure about what's in most of the packages when they arrive, actually, but there are some I do have a clue. This isn't one of them. No, it goes in the sides. This is an interesting setup. Interesting box. I think these are just padding. Yep. Could make sure if I throw away. Yep. This is all recyclable, good one, whoever it is, whoever it is. <laughs> right now I know who it's from. It's from Apple. So we've got a Apple Thunderbolt 3 to Thunderbolt 2 adapter. These are actually bi-directional. The original Apple ones are. So you can actually go between both. So Thunderbolt 3 is basically a USB-C connection, which means I can actually have a reverse connection. And then you've got Thunderbolt 2 cable as well, well Thunderbolt cable rather. This is the Thunderbolt 2 version, hopefully, the original Thunderbolt 2 version. So it means I've got an extension if I need it. So I'm not quite sure what I need. I mean, I've, I've only just got this computer, I haven't even set it up yet, it's sitting on my desk over there. I've only just unpacked it in the previous mail bag. So I've got to figure out exactly what I need, but I've got a bunch of things which I know I will need. I'm just trying to build up a stock of things which will be needed. I think I'll need it. You know what I mean? Need it? Oh. Yeah, I don't know what I need. Do I need? I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. I need everything. I have to collect the whole set. That's the way it works. It's like compulsion there. Anyway, videos, links down below for other things I do, like repairs and things like that. And subscribe link over there if you're not described. And a Patreon support link over there if you want to help me to buy things from our bag or bits of test equipment effects and things like that. See you later.